What's up, guys? Jaxel here. Um, a lot of you know I'm the author of a program you could find on obsproject.com called Scoreboard Assistant. Um, Scoreboard Assistant is a very simple program. It's designed to help you update text you have on the screen or images, depending on how you use it. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, generally, I made the program for myself, but I, I made the program so that anybody can use it so like let's say I'm running a stream and I gotta go to the bathroom I can leave somebody there to update everything because the program is really simple and easy to use whoops didn't mean to do that alright anyways so you can find the program on uh, OBS project uh, you know, even though it's on obsproject.com, it does work in XSplit as well. It actually works in any program that, uh, and you know what? It just works. It just updates files. So there's no restriction on any program, which is why I renamed it the Scoreboard Assistant. It actually used to be called XSplit Panel Writer, but that was before OBS came out and everyone was using XSplit. I personally, I still use XSplit for my live streams, but I'm using OBS as this example because I know most of you out there, you use OBS um, and, you know, it, it's easier for most people. Anyways, moving on. Um, so Scoreboard Assistant, it's Assistant is a simple program. Uh, you have tabs down here. You can add more by hitting this button. You can add scoreboard fields, scoreboards and images, four-person scoreboards, text fields, lower thirds, image selectors, clocks, timers, music monitors, PC monitors, hitbox, Twitch, challenge, Twitter, League of Legends. Uh, you know, that's everything that the program has right now. Um, I haven't updated it in a while, but it's okay because the program still works even though it hasn't received any updates uh, re anytime recently. Anyways, um, this is going to be a quick tutorial explaining how to use Scoreboard Assistant to update animations on your stream. I know a lot of people out there, they've messaged me saying they love Scoreboard Assistant, they love how easy it is to use, uh, but it doesn't support animations the same way that uh, other uh, scoreboard applications such as uh, FARP's uh, Stream Control or... Um, I, you know what, I forgot the name of the other one, but it, but that's actually not true. It does support animations. In fact, its support of animations is actually stronger than it is of these other programs because it doesn't restrict you into one language like ActionScript or Shockwave Flash or anything like that. So by default, all Scoreboard Assistant does is output XML files. So if we go here, nope, that's the wrong one. If I right-click the Save button, and go to text config and let's say let's go to the uh, player one field I'm just gonna click on that and what I have here is a configuration screen uh, what I'm configuring is where the, what the content of the player one field does does it output only to the XML file does it output as an image does it output as text no matter what there's always going to be an XML output but if you want you can add uh, as a text file okay and I'm gonna set that to text now normally this will go to the output folder and if I click Save it's gonna create that folder there we go versus 2 and normally there's just a versus 2 XML which is all the contents of this field we have a uh, player 1 player 2 score score 2 uh, match information game also the visibility setting because you can uh, tell uh, thing to just mark it as visible equals false and this generally for animations as well as the last time it was updated in a uh, timestamp uh, but since I selected text output for player one if I go to the versus folder there's also a text output for player one which just includes the contents of the uh, the field now you guys will see double pipes here that's because I can do things so game is uh, SF5, uh, Double Pipe, Street Fighter 5, and it also separates them by the double pipes into an A and B. That is universal throughout the entire program. Anyways, moving on from that, uh, you can also, if I go back here, set it to output as an image file. Now, outputting as an image file is a bit, uh, you know, more work. I personally don't like it. It was basically put in because XSplit does a really poor job 
of uh, handling text files, so image files was better for XSplit at the time. Now XSplit does it a lot better. OBS has always done text well, so there's really no issues with that. I'm only using XML because we're going to do animations with this, and using for animations, XML is easier because you're only reading that one XML file instead of all these text files. So let's delete this versus two folder because we won't need it. All we need is our XML output. All right, so I have uh, a page set up here. I'm sorry, not a page, a scene set up here with two pages on it, event information, which shows up from the bottom like that, and match information, which shows up from the bottom and the top like that. Now, it, it is actually pretty simple. Um, what I have is I have these bars checking every five seconds for updates to this panel. So let's say this is Grand Finals. I click Save, and you'll see an animation change the information. Let's add in some players. Let's say this is Chain Ace versus uh, Darth Arma, and you'll see some more animations up here. It's, you know, it's very simple. This way, if I go to the bathroom or if I have to run somewhere, someone could run the stream without me. I made it very easy to use, and I tried to make it so that I didn't have to teach anybody how to use the program because you can just look at it and see how it works. Anyways, the animation here is actually through HTML web pages. I said before that uh, Scoreboard Assistant doesn't lock you down to one sort of one single language. You don't have to use Action Script, Action Script, or Flash. In this case, I'm using HTML and JavaScript because it's the language I know. Now. Uh, I'm going to be explaining this with versus2.html. This is the web page I have for these panels here. Let's swap players. Let's see some animations. You can even change the scores. Chain this. Let's give him a 2 0. You know, that's supposed to slide up first. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, this computer I'm showing it on is a pretty slow computer. This is my home gaming computer, not my streaming computer. So it sometimes lags and skips stuff like that. But there we go. Now it's working. And it checks once every five seconds. So there we go. Now, uh, this is an HTML web page. So if you don't know anything about programming web pages, uh, you're going to have to brush up a bit on it because, you know, it it's actually the simplest way to do animations that I've found. And HTML is really simple. It's all about an eye for design, though. Um, if we forget the scripting I have up here, this is simple. It's just a series of divisions with score information, player names, the match information, and the game information. And... Uh, Let's see. Right now I'm pulling in some scripts. Let's uh, see what scripts I have there. Uh, so I have global CSS. This is global. So basically I use this uh, CSS file on pretty much all my pages, which is why I made it global. I don't want to have to rewrite all this code. Um, and in my script, you'll notice I have these icons, Empire Arcadia, uh, Monmouth County, uh, MGFC, Mammoth Gamers, Fight, I don't know what MGFC stands for, whatever. Uh, Chain A's can yell at me about it later. Uh, and th there's some other stuff, and the reason for that is this way, you know, I could type in Jaxel and click Save, and you'll see my name come down. Uh, but I can also do Jaxel TW in brackets uh, at 8 Way Run, and you'll see that come down, and then you'll see my Twitter with an icon there and that's basically because of these global icons I have here depending on what characters I put in so I can pretty much put any character I want which is how you see the 8-way run logo here uh, and that's being shown with uh, 8WR because it matches this text you can see the YouTube logo that's the YT you can see Twitch, uh, the Twitter logo, which is the TW. You know, you can make this list as big as you want. You can put as many icons as you want. If you wanted, you could have um, a country logo. So you can have like a USA flag for someone from the USA. You get Canada, uh, United Kingdom, uh, Mexico, anything you wanted. It's pretty universal. So that's the global CSS. I'll include variations of this in the uh, guide when I add it. Uh, on OBS project 
anyways next we have the versus 2.css now this is the uh, style sheet cascading style sheet that I have just for this versus 2 page which is match 2 versus 2 and uh, this basically defines how I want things to look the positioning of all these divisions and things like that um, the images the backgrounds uh, where things get placed uh, this is basically, um, you know, what? I'm going to remove these negatives and then open it in, uh, in, uh, there we go, you can see it right here, this is Chrome, and I can actually right click, click inspect, and with Chrome you can see how these rules have affected these things, uh, let's see the background image with height, players, locations of their text and I can actually change this in now this isn't changing it locally this is just changing it temporarily as an image and I can do things like this by raising and seeing how th these changes then I can go back and let's say hey I don't want it left uh, 140 I want it left 150 and then I can change player one uh, over here change it left 150 like that and then the next time it loads it'll be in that new place this is basic HTML stuff anyways let's put those negatives back in the reason why I have them negative is when you first load up the page you want these panels to be outside the viewable area and then the script is going to move them inside the viewable area so if I reload you're gonna see they're not visible which is why when you do this they're outside and then they come in uh, but that's through the JavaScript files, not the CSS. CSS is static for now.